What's up, YouTube? What's up? It's your boy Chris, and I'm back with another video today. And today, it's my birthday, but I really don't care because it's gonna be fun anyways. But okay, yeah, just got a notification, which I don't care. But I want to talk to you guys about something, and that is about. Something I've been going through. And the thing I've been going through is a tweet war. Yes, guys. On Twitter, I'm been do I'm been in the middle of a tweet war. It's been going on since 2016. Came into the new year. Me and this guy. Well, he I don't know who the hell actually. Yeah, I don't even know who who he is. Not one bit. Not one bit. The guy followed me. Maybe I think December the twenty first or second or something like that before Christmas. Well, no, the fifteenth. Yeah, he followed me December fifteenth. And then, cause I think I think he was liking like he was liking my tweets about. UFC and stuff. <laughs> Got a notification again. It's a messenger. But the thing is, yeah, so this guy was tweeting me the entire time, was liking my tweets and everything. And then one day, I think around the 20th of December. I shared a post on my Twitter account. It was about the Brock Lesnar situation with him failing his two drug tests. So I was like, okay. But it was also about CM Punk. Yes, we all know CM Punk last year finally did his first ever UFC fight okay CM Punk came from the WWE World Wrestling Entertainment to the UFC this guy had no prior knowledge whatsoever he had no skill background whatsoever even though during WWE they said he had some Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and Muay Thai expertise, that was all for this for more fans and stuff. It wasn't true. He had no MMA experience whatsoever. So, so there was like, oh my God, what what is God gonna do? What is this guy gonna really do? Really go what like what this guy what's Sam Pump's gonna do? This guy has no MMA background whatsoever. So they did a documentary, The Evolution of Punk. It aired on SBN and all that. People watched it and liked it and like since we like CM Punk, especially from WWE was like, since he's moving on, let's see how he does. He was getting huge. People were liking and commenting, even on the YouTube channels and stuff. They were like, they were liking and commenting. Like, oh my God, I like, I really like this. So, so we all know that CM Punk faced Mickey Gall. Yes, Mickey Gall. He just recently had a fight with Super Sage Northcut. Sage Northcut. He beat him. I think by TKL, I think, yeah. So, that was his fourth win or fourth or fifth win as a professional fighter. And so, so Sage was like, so I'm like, okay. So Mickey Gall, he already has some experience. Yes, he, he already had like, like one, about two or three 
RA wins. He was 3 0 undefeated. And this was Punk's first fight. So, Punk trained. And then he went to fight. Mickey Gall lost within one minute and 48 seconds in, in the first round, I think. And everybody was like, oh my God, Punk lost. I don't think he really. So, Dana White, the president and CEO of UFC, was like, oh my God. Punk got his ass kicked. I really don't think this guy's really cut out for this. I'm like, and people are like, hold up. Wait a second. This is this guy's first fight. He didn't really have that much time to train. He was kind of debating because, as we all know, he's married to formerly the known AJ Lee, AJ Lee from WWE, who's Real name is April. So, they were debating about what he, should he really want to do it or do he wants to. Punk, will, everybody knows CM Punk from the WWE days. He he knows he's gonna man up. So he man up. He says, "I'm gonna do it." So he did it. He trained. He he did the fight. He lost. And then now they're saying. Oh my God, this guy should not get no chance to fight again because he got his ass kicked. Okay, let me tell y'all something. A loss is nothing compared to winning. You have to lose in order to gain. So, like I said, people can, can lose. Undefeated fighters can lose. Like, I seen Anderson Silva. He had a long ass win streak. He got to a point to where he had to fight a guy. So he fought the guy and he lost. Simple as that. But that didn't affect him. He came back and did another couple fights and won. He came back again to fight the guy, Chris Whedon. Wildman, and then he lost again. He was he was he was he reflected off those wins. I got a little tongue tied. He reflected off his loss and boosted himself to go on and fight again. Same thing with Ronda Rousey. She, I think, yes, yeah, gets Holly Holmes. She lost her first fight. Okay. People are like, oh my gosh, she lost. Finally, she can stop being a bitch, bro. Dude, she wasn't really being a bitch. She was actually in character. Like, that's a sense of humor. If you, you can be a good person or a, you can be a good uh, and people person or be a bad and be as like a badass. So what? She lost. She was going through things. We already knew that. She was going through things with her family and all of that. We knew that. So, when people are talking shit, they're like, oh my gosh, she's got her ass beat. I'm like, okay. Everybody gets their ass beat every now and then. Like, for real. Like, there were people like me and my, like myself and other people out there. We, we wouldn't be able to do shit like that. Then she just recently had another fight against Amanda Newell. She lost in 48 seconds. Everybody's like, oh my gosh, she's lost in 48 seconds. Way she's lost. She's she can she can she could retire now. But it's not about about retiring. Because Ronda made made the U women's MMA to what it is now. And if it wasn't for her, there would probably wouldn't be no women's MMA. But, like I said, people are like, she doesn't really need to, like, fans who really like her, they're like, she doesn't need to retire. She needs to just reflect off this and come up with a new game plan. Because, look, it's about, in order to win and be motivated to do something yourself the fighter your coaching staff 
your, your training team have to all be excited and motivated about it. Our coaches, staff, and everything are like, okay, we're going to just train you, do this and do that. And we're just going to go for it. Her training staff, her coach, her coach was like, after she got beat, she, he's like, good job. What type of coach is going to be excited about a loss? I'm like, dude, don't tell her good job because she lost in 48 seconds. What's so good about that? I would have been happy with her, like, going at least a full fight without getting beat up or whatever. And, and it's like, oh, well, she's going to get beat up eventually. She's going to get hit, but I would like to have her, like, at least go, at least go at least two or three rounds and be proud about her actually being able to fight again and actually getting in there and putting on a good show but you're like oh good job you got beaten 48 seconds now we now you can retire I go I get paid you can go ahead and fuck off I don't care about you I'm like that's not motivation that's just being a damn dumbass so right now She's reflecting on it. And once she fully reflects on it and gets focused, she'll give us our, her response. So right now, with all the fucking memes and shit, like, ooh, this bitch got knocked out. Ooh, this is how your face looks when you get knocked the fuck out. I'm like, okay. Like I said, if no more people like me and you guys out there who don't who have no experience like in MMA, you're gonna get you're gonna, you're gonna get it fucked up eventually. So what happened your ass got what happened your ass got knocked out? What happened to you got knocked out? And people started commenting, like, dude, you got knocked out. Oh, you suck and all that. So what? You, are you gonna sit there petty and bitch about it? And says, oh, I'm gonna quit? Or are you gonna be be a man or woman and reflect off of it and move on and fight again? That's how you operate. But back to this tweet war thing. So I respond about it to Dana White. I tweet, I, I tweeted Dana White and like I'm like, Dana, Brock, I really don't care about because he he has so much of a big ego. He thinks he's a badass, but he was using drugs to help him boost and stuff to, to win the fights and stuff. But CM Punk, he was all natural. I'm like, give Punk another chance. This is his first, it was his first time fighting. A loss is nothing, everybody loses, he knows that. Dana White knows that. Then I commented about, later on, I did not comment about a Conor McGregor fight. I think it was going against Nate Diaz. Yeah, Nate Diaz, I, I'm like, I was talking about the Nate Diaz fight he had. Both of them, the first one, the second one. So I commented. And tweet about it. Then the guy I was talking about earlier in the in the vlog commented about coming about him being a champ and now being being a both a two week champ. I'm like, okay, that doesn't mean anything right now. Right now. Conor McGregor is still in his prime. He, he's talking shit, but he's backing it up. And then he's like, "Well, if he if he's giving everybody else a title shots, why he just don't give my man Kanabi, my brother Kanabi, a shit?" I'm like, "Okay, dude, Kanabi's a good fighter and all, but most I've seen great fighters in the UFC." And any type of MMA, any type of MMA organization, fight and not get a title shot. So you can call him. He's like he calling him Mick Chicken. Like he call him. Like he's scared of Kanab. Be like, Conor McGregor's not scaring anybody. Right now, everybody who called him out, he stepped on bottom. So, 
So if because he he sent me a gift, what can I be called him out? I'm like, okay. Conor McGregor is going through stuff. He's because everybody in the world is talking shit about him. It's like, fuck this. Conor McGregor sucks ass. I don't care anymore. But Conor McGregor is going against all the haters and shit and talking trash and says, oh, fuck this. I don't care about you. I'm doing me. So that's what he's doing. So me and this guy goes back and forth about that. He goes about Kanabi saying, oh, Kanabi's going to beat everybody in the fucking UFC world. I'm like, okay, I, don't, I really don't care about Kanabi. I just love the sport. I just love the sport. So fuck Kanabi for... I don't care about one person. I just, I love, I just want to see entertainment. But he's like, oh, then now we're going back. And, now we're, me and him are going back and forth talking about, about Kanabi fighting people. Then we go to, from him to, now we're fighting about, then they were like, people want to see Cody Gam, Gam Baby fight Conor McGregor. And I'm like, oh, I would love to see that fight. And the guy's like, hey. Yeah, the guys are like, fuck that. I really don't care. Yeah, somebody's giving a shout out. I guess he's watching my videos or whatever. He's like, forget that. I don't care about it. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm at one about the airport report. I'm, just, I got, I'm standing outside to finish the vlog. But, um, yeah, the guy's like, fuck that. I don't give a crap about it. I'm like, dude. I just want to see a fight. It don't matter if if Conor McGregor goes against against Cody Gambaby or or this Kanabi guy. It really don't matter. I just want to see a fight and a good and a good fight. Because right now, from my from my point of view, I don't really think Kanabi can stand up for Conor McGregor. Could, but I think that fight will at least go to at least one or two rounds, maybe three at that. But I cannot see them going all five rounds, go to the distance. And fight and I also see so we're sitting here tweeting back and forth like oh Conor McGregor's a chicken he's he's not he's not that much of a badass I'm like, who gives a crap I really don't care about Kanabi I just want to see a fight so right now to this to this guy I don't even know I want to say this shut the hell up about being obsessed with Kanabi Close your goddamn mouth because I don't really give a shit about what you have to say. All the thing is, I'm going to sit here and stay a fan of USC and watch the USC with or without you. So right now, from my point of view, I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit about you. I don't give a shit about anybody else. I just want to watch the fucking sport in peace. We don't have to comment and tweet with your ass over nothing. So... At, at this point of now, Dana White doesn't see Kanabi as a championship contender in this division with Conor McGregor and all of them. So for now, shut your mouth, close it, and hush up, and and let and watch the sport without commenting and tweeting me almost every fucking day about it, and saying, "Dude, you need to shut the hell up your ass. Fuck you. Fuck that. I don't give a shit. It's uh, it's done." Okay, it's done. Okay, so now I'm gonna tell you. Once it's done, it's done. End it. For now, I'm gonna keep responding to you. And once I'm done responding to you, you can shut the hell up. Okay. So, guys, I'm about to go do my therapy appointment. If you want, you can drop a like and subscribe. If you like this video, hit the like button. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you like. I'm out. Peace.